I'm no longer married, so <laughs> there's a reason for that. <laughs> Thirty minutes again. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. And this may end sooner. Yeah. yeah. Ready when you are. Welcome back, guys. So last episode we talked about tribe and friendships, and at different stages in your life, it calls for a different group of friends, maybe, and the the times in your life when you acquire new friends that are natural, like after high school, going to, into college and getting married and maybe a job change. So there's all reasons, all kinds of reasons mm -hmm. to, to change friend groups. What we want to talk about in this episode is digging into being married with friends and what happens. Mm -hmm and even divorces and friends and what happens. Mm -hmm. And so Angie, we're gonna start out with you asking me a question here. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been married, so, but I obviously have a lot of friends who are married and so I can talk about friendships and what happens when your bestie gets married and that kind of thing. But, but really, you know, you, you've been married, you, mm -hmm. your, your friendships, you had a set of friends that you started with when, mm -hmm. when you first got married, then you had kids. So I'm curious about those different friend groups and, and maybe how it changed as you went through those different seasons of life. Sure. Talking from a 50 year old self and, and talking about my 22 year old self when I got married, feels like a very little bitty child mm -hmm. right um yeah. you were i was and yeah. I, and i yeah i 22 is young to mm -hmm. get married and and having started a career and i would say that the friendships that i had in college because i was dating randy during college and then we got married which you know lasted about four years. We dated four years and then got married. Gotcha. I we kind of had the same friends in that period of time, mm -hmm. and so going into getting married, we there were couple friends in there. There were some single friends too that we hung out, went out with, but a lot of those friends of mine got married around the same time. Mm -hmm. And I can think of several couples in particular that we all just got married in that twenty-two to twenty-four age group. Uh, we all started our lives, and that was just the thing to do. And Randy and I waited four years before I got pregnant. So we had a good stint of time sure. that we didn't have children to mm -hmm. add to the marriage. Mm -hmm. I think that during those years without children, we continued to go out as couples. And I don't remember my girlfriend's in my 20s, I don't remember me going out with my girlfriends. Okay. So you start dating somebody at 18, 18 to 22, you, you're you together every weekend, you go out together with the same people every weekend, mm -hmm. uh, you add on friends that meet you out every weekend, you know, it just, yeah. I don't remember a time that the girls just said, hey, let's go out and no, nice. get crazy. No. Yeah. Actually, I say that and I remember, I can remember one because it just popped in my head. Okay. So get married. A uh, lot of our same friends stayed around here. I remember one couple in particular moved away, but most of them stayed here. Mm -hmm. So we continue to see those couple friends. And I don't remember there being a, a girl's night out. Mm -hmm. There was always a guy's night out, though. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know what that means other than maybe the guys were just, I know there were sports involved. There was, they were playing softball or they were playing whatever guys do. Yeah. And so those things naturally happened. And I remember coming to those nights 
to watch the game, but then I went home and they all stayed and carried on for, gotcha. you know, hours on end. Mm-hmm. But I just don't remember that my girlfriends had happy hours and had girls night out very mm-hmm. often. Mm-hmm. So then you add kids to that five years later. The guys are still doing their things. Mm-hmm. They're still having guys night out and they're still probably playing sports up to a certain age. And I'm at home with a baby. Mm-hmm. And then I'm at home with two babies. Mm-hmm. I, I don't... And, and maybe I'll bear some of that responsibility that, that maybe that wasn't a habit to begin with in my younger years before I had children to where by the time I had children, a lot of my girlfriends had children and the wives were left at home with the kids. Mm-hmm. I honestly cannot tell you a time that I remember leaving the girls at home so that I could go to happy hour. It was always the opposite way around. And I was staying home so he could go out and do whatever guys do. Mm -hmm. I do remember, just because this is a memory I have and I can still see my friend Lori sitting at my table, we were both pregnant at the same time and our girls were born three days apart. So we experienced that pregnancy together. And I remember instead of us going out, she came over to my house and I made a big chocolate cake and the two pregnant ladies sat at the table <laughs> and had big glasses of milk and chocolate cake that's and that was our, that's, that's what we your, did yeah that you was your know socialization yeah it was so i think for me in in my group of friends and at that point in my life and i think old habits die hard right so if you haven't formed a habit of going out with your girlfriends in the early years of your marriage and after having children you're probably not going to unless you get exposed to a completely different group of people Mm -hmm. which i can't say that i you know that i had an overwhelming amount of new people that came into my world until the girls were in grade school Mm -hmm. that then i'm seeing parents at school and i'm you know you just kind of acquire a new tribe and get a new group of friends because your kids are in a different stage of their lives and you're seeing those people at pta meetings and you're you know going to sports now no not a chosen tribe no that people people that you've chosen to surround yourself to to better yourself right right and and being the age group I am now in an empty nester where Mm -hmm. I don't have children at home with me and getting to go do, you know, if you and I want to go to happy hour after this, we can. Mm -hmm. It it opens my eyes to what I what I didn't do and and the time out that I probably needed. I assure you I needed the time out. I just was not in the habit of ever taking it for myself. Mm -hmm. So therefore for many years, I just didn't do that. Mm-hmm. So in the, the last episode where we started this conversation, you talked about when you got divorced and, and finding, you know, just kind of falling into another tribe. Aside from just going out or whatever, during those years of marriage and, and babies, did you have friends you could call? Did you have conversations? Did you yes. have lunch dates? Did you was there any socialization going on? And after that ended, after the divorce, was it hard for you to try to create those relationships or take them a step further if you had just been having a phone conversation or whatever all those years? Yeah, I've always had close friends and and at least one of my high school friends is someone that we still I still call her and and throw stuff against the wall with her. Mm-hmm. I had friends in that time period that absolutely I could call and and I and maybe complain to or maybe hey, you know, do you want to get out with our kids and ha- you know and we would talk while the kids were playing or whatever right, right. i always had friends there but i do wonder if 
if I, if my, probably my friendship suffered because I was maybe hyper focused on raising a family instead, and they all were too. Right. You know, I've not, I don't, I've never felt like I couldn't, that I didn't have those friends that I could call when I needed to. Gotcha. I will say though that when you, when you go through a divorce, friendships change mm -hmm. and oftentimes you learn who your real friends are mm -hmm. and I never was one of those people that and I'm still not I don't believe that divorce should cause friendships to break up mm -hmm. I feel like if you're in a friendship for the right reasons and Very you nice. love both of those people and maybe you don't love both of those people and and you know I would say that sometimes that does happen that you're closer to the mm -hmm. woman or to the man or to you know whatever mm -hmm. then then you don't have to remain friends or at least close friends with one of them but many times there isn't a separation because you love both of them the same mm -hmm. and i i can say that some friendships were definitely there was lines drawn maybe from where that friendship came from so if it came from him or if it came from my side the friends stayed on that side mm -hmm. and and many times that was okay you know right. there were times that it was split right down the middle and maybe i stayed really good friends with the wife and he stayed really good friends with the husband mm -hmm. i don't i just don't feel like that should always deter a friendship right sometimes it it takes people in different ways though right you're not yes. getting together as couples anymore you're not seeing them as right. couples so right. there's a definite difference in the friendship and and oftentimes that's just a part of life that you just go separate ways because right. this this happened you know right right we're both readers big podcast listeners and and i would like to mention Lori Lori harder right now because she has a book called Finding Your Bliss, and in that, she makes a point about, and I think this is important for our young listeners who are getting married and starting, you know, starting that part sure. of their life, that if you're solely dependent on your spouse or, you know, significant other for your everything, for all that you need, that's way too much pressure for them. That's really unfair it, it of is. you to yeah. put all of that on that one person. Yeah. You need, first of all, we have different perspectives. Men and women, for we sure. have different perspectives. We, you know, you don't need just one person in your life. You really need some good girlfriends as well. And right. guy friends, for that matter. If, Absolutely. If that, if that relationship can, you know, hopefully you've got a mature mature person on the other side and, and you can have those kinds of relationships. Right. But it's just unfair to put that kind of pressure right. on someone and make them your everything. Well, and I think our life is more full mm -hmm. the, the, with the different friendships that we have and that we acquire. Right. Because I know you would say the same. I have friends that I wouldn't necessarily put in the same room with maybe, you know, this friend, I wouldn't put in the same room with this friend, not because they wouldn't get along, but just maybe that has, that's never happened because I know them separately. It's just two different tribes right. or two different types right. of friends. Right. But how boring life would be mm -hmm. to have a friend and that could be a spouse or just a friend yeah. that that's the only person that you can ever open up to or, or right. run something by or right. want to feel nurtured by or whatever it is. Well, and just like in, in the last episode, you mentioned different types of friends and we all have different strengths. So, you know, you don't want to you don't want to not not that that person can't be your everything in terms right. of your nurture your right. um fun self your you know right. all those things right so um so it's important to diversify if you will um and i'd like to talk about that from the non-married perspective yes. when your when your best friend gets does get married finds someone yes you know when you're, so you have a story I, angie i do and and um you know, luckily, mine is a really good story. Yeah, I know that there are there are stories out there with best friends that are separated by marriage. Um, mainly, I think because that 
your significant other doesn't understand what love is. Right. Love is not jealous. It's not possessive. It's right. not controlling. No, it is and not. And if someone's trying to do that to you, then I think you have to step back and, and take a look at that relationship. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, my bestie and I, um, she was, we were in our thirties before she ended up getting married. So we were older and we'd spent a lot of time together, you know, us, she's the one who got me into the Sertoma group and, and all of that. And, um, we spent a lot, we, we traveled together. We, we just did a lot of things together mm -hmm. and knowing that at, at some point one of us is going to meet right. someone. Yeah. And I won't say that it was a worry of mine, but it did occur to me occasionally. And I think it probably occurred to her. What if, what if, what if Sheila finds someone before I do? What's right. that going to look like? Of course. And, and will that tear our friendship apart? And fortunately, and big shout out to Brett McGowan, who was married to my bestie, um, for understanding the things that I've already mentioned, that love is not controlling, um, jealous, or fearful. And, and he recognized that if he married her, he was getting me mm -hmm. too. He was getting the best friend too. Mm -hmm. And he accepted that. And luckily, great guy, she, she really... Sheila did a great job in, in picking her husband because, um, and they're a great couple together, but that doesn't always go that way. But no, fortunately for me, it did. And we remain great friends to this day and, and I love them both. Right. And I think you really, you know, the moral of that story is again, this person you've chosen to spend the rest of your life with, do they get it? Do they understand that you need more than just them? And if right. they don't, that's a big red flag to me. It is. I agree with that. And talking about a friend like that, so you've maybe not grown up with her, but you met her at a, a poignant time in your life. So mm -hmm. you've shared lots of experiences. You've traveled together. Right. You know each other very well. Can you imagine if you just kept that friend and didn't ever enter into different spaces and yeah. different different tribes different tribes yeah. where you you get different varying opinions right. of life and different experiences right. so you know staying here my whole life it it certainly um it certainly keeps a lot of those long-term friendships you have intact mm -hmm. for the good or the bad right but it also limits maybe if if a lot of who you have around you stayed here as well they don't have the life experiences potentially right. that you bringing in new friends into your world mm -hmm. do and mm -hmm. they've lived other places they grew up somewhere else they they've experienced different things and just the the difference now that i know in in the different friendship groups that i have the different experiences that some of my friends have had and that they can bring to a conversation mm -hmm. It, it it grows yourself, right? It, it, it yeah. helps your seed grow and makes you want more, makes you see the world through somebody somebody's eyes who's just had different experiences than you have. Absolutely. You Every time you enter into a different tribe or different group, whether you change jobs or you, you know, start a new church or whatever, you mm -hmm. have the opportunity to develop these relationships and but you do have to put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. it, it is, you do. there's a little bit of um, fear, obviously hesitation, right. again, to try to to meet that someone new. Right. And I, I, at this point, I, I would like to make another point about, about Lori Harder and what she says in her book. And, you know, let's say you go to a networking event or you go to a new church or whatever it sure. happens to be. And you make a connection, you think, with someone, mm -hmm. right? You you have a good first conversation, and you think, oh, we have a lot in common. I think I'd like to get to know that person better. Yeah. So you make a point, you, you trade numbers or whatever, contact information, and you think, yeah, we'll definitely get together. And that person seems all in at the time. And then you text, and they don't answer. Right. Or you email, and they don't answer. And immediately we go to this negative space within ourselves. Mm -hmm. well, what what did I do? What what did I? What did she take away? Did I say something to insult yeah. her? Did I? Maybe she doesn't like me like I liked her. Exactly, exactly. And Lori talks about you have to you have to quit making it so personal. Mm -hmm. 
because you make that connection that one time and you don't really know what's going on in that other person's life. Sure. Maybe they have 10 kids and they don't have time. They don't they don't know how to set boundaries. They're very busy at work. They got sick. I mean, a, a number of things. But I, I, I don't like the fact that just it's human nature to go negative, that it's something True. that we did yeah. that made that person not respond or not reach back out. Maybe the timing is simply not good right. for them. Maybe not. Do you think men are like that? Or do you think that's no. just a woman trait? I think it is. I, I think, think for most most women, that's a trait we all probably have. You start second guessing. Yeah. And there's probably some statistics or some studies out there. I think men are easier. They meet they meet another guy and they have a conversation about golf or football or whatever. Right. And it's just a conversation. And yeah, we'll go play golf sometime. Right. But if they don't... There's no feelings around it. Right. We're, right. we're too we're big just, feelers. We, we are. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Have you, so the reference that I made about the How to Break Up with Your Friends book. Yeah. Can you think of a time that you broke up with a friend mm -hmm. or you should have broke up with mm -hmm. a friend? Yeah. I think in my case, it's more I should have. And I recognize, yeah. you know, yeah. my 50 year old self understands that now, yeah. but at the time, there was something that I needed. Again, it's it's scary. Yeah. If you break up with a friend or this this tribe, is there anybody else that's going to accept me? Right. So, uh, but but you recognize it. It's just yeah, it's there, and and you you have to listen to that little inner voice because yeah. again, the these people that are taking up the space in your time, in your calendar, in your you know the 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 effort that you're putting in. Yeah. If you release that and you let that go, it makes room for things that are more healthy for you. Exactly. And people that are more healthy for Agree. you. Agree. I can remember being a part of a happy hour once that included numerous people with that I like mm -hmm. and some people I didn't even know. So, you know, you don't really know who you're going to end up at the table with. And I remember walking out of there thinking, I won't go next time. Mm -hmm. I don't need that in my life. Right. I've I've got way more important things to do with that two hours than to go back to that group. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that maybe points of change in our life cause us to think those things. It could have just been a bad day. It wasn't a bad day. It, I think that those are the friends you need to break up with, right? right? And it doesn't mean you don't need to be friends anymore. It just means that whatever commitment you gave to that group of people mm -hmm. for however long you've done that mm -hmm. doesn't is not important to you anymore right. for whatever reason, right. for whatever season you're in. Right. Question, have you ever not been invited to a group that you knew you weren't invited because you were either told you weren't invited or you got wind that you weren't mm -hmm, invited. Mm -hmm. Have you ever not been invited? Oh, sure. You know, and, and how'd you feel? I think the age of social media. True. Plays a big part That's in true. That. Yes. You know, if back in high school, the only way I would have known that I was left out of something <laughs> right. would have been if somebody told me, right? I didn't have social media right. to everybody blasting their pictures. Right. And certainly it's hurtful. Yeah. And you ask yourself, why wasn't I invited? Yeah. If we dig deeper into that and you weren't invited and you, and you felt left out and hurt and all of those things, but if we take a step back and, and after the emotion sort of goes away, maybe, maybe it wasn't such a bad thing. Yeah. 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 I can remember in years past not being invited to a group mm -hmm. to go do something. I can't remember exactly what it was. And I remember thinking when I knew that I wasn't invited, I remember thinking, am I hurt? Mm -hmm. Like questioning the feeling that I felt. And I think being left out of something is a common feeling, right? Sure. We all feel that. We've felt it many times in our lives. But I remember feeling that feeling and then questioning myself because in the end, 
when I learned who was around the table, mm -hmm. I didn't, I acknowledged to myself again, I don't need to be at that table. Yeah. I don't want to be at that table. Yeah. And just because there was an event that happened that a bunch of people went to, mm -hmm. it, it didn't need to include me and that's okay. Yeah. So I think there's a level of confidence that comes with age, definitely. Right and the wisdom that sometimes sitting alone on my back porch is a much better alternative than yes. being invited out to an evening that I just don't care to contribute to. Right. And, and, and I say that very earnestly. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy my back porch yeah. by myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe too much. <laughs> Well, one point I want to go back to, just uh, I want to make this point, is that you you alluded to this, that just because you break up with someone or you move on mm -hmm. to a different tribe, it doesn't mean you don't love that person or no. those people anymore. Nope. You can love them from afar and not have them in your life every yes. day, and it's probably better for you and for them. Yes. And you just have to accept that. And they have to accept that, that... Yeah. I still love you, but yeah. I'm not going to spend every day with you. And yes. you're probably going to be better off. We're both going to be better off for that. Yeah. So, And I think that at times of our lives, that just naturally happens mm -hmm. with different seasons that you're in for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So I think many times when it happens naturally, I, I think that the other person probably feels the same way right because right. they're not they dig deep and, exactly yeah. and they're yeah. probably many times they're not trying to reach out to you so it just happens because life happens it does it doesn't mean that there has to be some big breakup of well i don't want you know i don't need to or i don't want to right. it just you know it just naturally happens sometimes and it's for the better maybe for both people and you know, I've had it happen where someone broke up with me, and I knew it was coming. You, you kind sure, of, you, yeah. you sense that, right? You yeah. sense that things aren't the way they're supposed to be. Yeah. And for whatever reason, I wasn't brave enough, or I, 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 I was trying to figure out how to do it, and they did it. Yeah. And in that moment, you're hurt, but you know, give it time because it. it when you look back, you're going to be so grateful to that person. I'm going to reference Lori's book again because this is a, a, a big point, I think. Sometimes, she says, sometimes you must be, to be the hero of someone's story, you must first be the villain. Mm. And I think that's very, very poignant. We, we all play our role, as we've talked about, whatever season it is. Sometimes people are in your life for a season, mm -hmm. a day. Um, a transaction, mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a, a different workplace. And sometimes people are with you for life. Mm -hmm. And you just have to recognize that not everybody's a lifer. Yeah. No, they aren't. Yeah. They aren't. So as we kind of wrap up here, I, I do want to make, I do want to be sure and reference, um, Lori Harder also has a podcast and it is called Earn Your Happy, mm -hmm. and it's a great podcast to listen to. Yep. Again, her book is called A Tribe Called Bliss. And if you're looking for a way to meet people, a way to build a tribe, her book actually goes through that. Mm -hmm. It kind of seems corny, I think, yeah. uh, a little bit of it. But especially if you're new in a community and you Absolutely. don't have an outlet for friendship. Yeah. And I think it could be very, um, very good read for someone who's in that type of position absolutely yeah. i agree with that yeah well thanks for sharing yeah. and we will see you all next time thanks gershman studios for hosting as usual we'll catch you next time bye hopefully you were ready to wrap that up yeah i was okay yeah